Hello and welcome back to Tea in the Deep Blue Sea with me, Victoria. Thank you for joining me. If this is your first video, welcome to the channel. Cheers. If you haven't already, please hit the like and subscribe button. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, I will leave my link down in the description. So in today's video, I'm going to be setting up a basic sea monkey tank. I've got a pink sea monkey's ocean zoo and I'm going to be taking you through everything you need to set up a basic sea monkey tank. I hope you enjoy the video. Thank you again for joining me. Cheers. So it's time for ocean fact number two. Today's ocean fact is the plural of fish is actually fishes. So you can actually say, oh, look at the fishes. And it is correct. The term fish is often used if you're talking about one species. So there's a load of tuna. You can say, oh, there are some fish. However, usually with multiple species of fish, you say the word fishes. So fishes is actually correct. It's the same with octopuses, multiple octopuses, although you may think it's octopi, it's actually octopuses. So again, you can be, oh, look at the cute octopuses. And you can be correct and cute at the same time. So highly recommended. I hope you enjoy my sea monkey tank and enjoy the video. Cheers. I've got sea monkeys. So today I'm going to be setting up a new Sea Monkeys Ocean Zoo tank and I've got everything here that I need to do that, including Jerry, who's keeping me company, and a nice cup of tea. Cheers. So I've got the Ocean Zoo tank in pink that I got from my local pets at home because they now stock Sea Monkeys. I was so happy. And inside there we've got the three packets we will need. We've got the water purifier, the instant live eggs and the growth food. In here, there is also a spoon for feeding them with. You just want the small end there. And there is also a magnifying glass. Whether this came in there or not, or I've added it from my collection, I'm not entirely sure, but these are really easy to get hold of, if not. I've got a bubbler that I stole, an aqua leash that I stole from my castle tank, and also got the trusty sea monkey instructions here. So what we're going to do today, we're going to follow the instructions step by step just to give you a bit of an idea of how to do it and just a bit of extra hand if you want any advice doing it really. So without any further chatter from me, we're going to get started. Enjoy. Cheers. So the first thing you need to do is fill up your tank with water. So you can use tap water, but I recommend using distilled water. If you see on the back of the tank here, there's a little fill line as to where you need to fill it too. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is fill up to here with distilled water. Let's move those out of the way first so they don't get wet. Fill the tank with distilled water up to the line at the back there, as you can see. This is water that I've distilled myself at home and there'll be a future video showing you just how you can do that yourself. So what we need to go ahead and do now is add the water purifier. I'll just tear the top off that. And this is going to go straight into here. So my Sea Monkey Ocean Zoo tank is ready to add the water purifier. It's been filled up with distilled water up to the line at the back. And now we're just going to get the water purifier packet and we're going to pour that all in. Just going to use the aqua leash just to give it a little bit of a stir around in there. I'm going to pop on the lid and now we wait 24 to 36 hours and I'm going to wait 36 hours for best results. The water purifier packet that I've just put in, it contains salts to bring the water up to the salinity that you want for sea monkeys because they can't live in fresh water, it has to be salt water. So this contains salt and it purifies the water to get rid of any, any nasty chemicals that are in there from your tap water. But I use distilled water so it is already pure, so it's just adding the necessary salts that I need. You can just see it dissolving at the bottom there. You can see all the dust coming off that as it dissolves into the water. So now we wait until we can add the instant eggs. So it is 36 hours later and we're now going to add these sea monkeys instant eggs. So what we're going to do is just rip the top of the packet off and take off the lid of our tank. And you can see it's just a powder in there that we are going to put into the tank. I'm just going to pour that in there. So you can see the blue coming up. This is a temperature indicator. So it's currently saying that the temperature is too cold. 
So we want that to be a nice orangey colour. I'm going to just shake all of those out into the tank as so. And you can see that dye really clearly, so that's blue, so that's saying the temperature. The temperature is too cold in there for the sea monkeys, so what we need to do, we need to warm up the tank a little bit. So here on the instructions that come with the tank, you can see the colour indicator for what the temperature is and what it should be. It's blue at the moment, so that means it's going to take quite a while for them to hatch, so the temperature needs to be raised. I tend to like it to be red, so you want about 26 to 28 degrees is what I kind of stick at, for which I found best results with my tanks. So you can see the blue indicator in there. You can see the little black eggs floating around in the tank. So what we're going to do, we're going to raise the temperature of the tank. Place the lid back on the tank. What you want is somewhere with indirect sunlight, but not somewhere like a windowsill because the sunlight can be too hot and it can essentially fry your sea monkeys. You want somewhere where they will get some light to encourage the algae to grow, but not somewhere where there's too many temperature changes. So I'm going to put mine next to a windowsill so it does get some light, but not also direct sunlight, which will be too much for the sea monkeys. There are numerous things that you can do to increase the temperature, including heating mats, pet heating pads, things like that. Using tin foil to keep the heat in as well is a really good low budget option. So I'm going to show you some of them now. One tool that you can use is tin foil. It's really great for wrapping around your tank to keep the heat in. But you want to do this when the tank is at a good temperature to stop it from losing heat rather than when it is this cold. But that's a great thing you can find around the house to help your sea monkeys. A couple of tools that I would recommend getting are a digital aquarium thermometer like this. So this has a little probe that will go into the tank and you can look at it to monitor what the temperature is. But don't worry if you don't have one, there are other ways of checking the temperature of the tank. You can use a standard digital water thermometer to put in the tank to test what the temperature is. This is a great tool just for seeing what the temperature is. If you don't have something like this, you can check your room temperature or you can get a simple room thermostat to place near it. It'll tell you what the outside temperature of the tank is. It's a great indicator of what the temperature roughly may be in the tank. So you want to keep it around 26 to 28 degrees so it isn't too cold and a stable temperature is better. So if you can afford to invest in heating and thermostats, I would highly recommend it. But I'm trying to do a bit of a basics video to show you a basic way of taking care of them without putting all of the money into it that I have. Like I say, I do have an under vivarium heat pad. That is great, it's a heating mat controlled by a thermostat, which I will put this one on, but there are basic ways that you can do the same thing. So this is a digital water thermometer that we can use to take the temperature of the water. So we just take the lid off and pop that in. It's currently reading around 22 degrees. So it's a little bit cold for the sea monkeys, but what we're going to do, we're going to warm that up now. These are really cheap and easy to get hold of, and you can get hold of them on Amazon or anywhere else on the internet, or at one of your local shops, probably easily enough. So there are some great tools that I would recommend investing in for the health of your sea monkeys. Another tool you can use to help with the heat, if you don't want to invest in a heat, like in a heating mat, is a heat pad. So this is a small pet heat pad that I got on Amazon, designed for things like guinea pigs, small animals. Now, I found them because I used to work at a hedgehog hospital and I used to volunteer there and we use these in to keep the hedgehogs warm. So what it is, it's got a nice soft case on it and if you unzip the case inside, it's like a little hot water bottle. It's rather, it's really solid so it's a nice firm base you can stand the tank on. So you just put that in the microwave Make sure you put the case back onto it before standing your tank on it. And it's stable enough to stand your tank on like so. This is a really good alternative. They're cheap, they're quite easy to get hold of on the internet. And it's something that will provide heat to your tank if it drops too cold. If you keep your room at a good temperature, you shouldn't be too much of an issue. But just to keep it at a bit of a higher temperature if you do have problems with that, this is a great investment. You can put it in the microwave. You will have to keep microwaving it to keep it warm. It does stay warm for a while, but you don't want too much difference in temperature. So this is a great first starter tool to use, although I would, as you go along, recommend investing in a heat pad to keep them warm. So that is that. 
so the eggs are in there and hopefully when I raise the temperature they will begin to hatch. We don't need to feed them until after five days but we have the food packet right here and also the feeding spoon and it's the small end of the feeding spoon you want and it's one scoop of that about every seven days. You don't want the water to be cloudy because that can be a sign you've overfed them so wait for it to clear again before feeding them. It can go a bit cloudy after feeding and that's totally normal just wait for it to be uncloudy Wait for it to be clear again, uncloudy, what a word, um, before you feed them again. So just to keep an eye on that, because overfeeding is really a common problem. But I will have a future video on common sea monkey problems and uncommon ones, and also what you can do to deal with these. So I'm going to go and warm this tank up a bit, and I will give you some progress shots as they start to hatch. One thing that's really important for sea monkeys, especially babies, when they can't get up to the surface to breathe, is aerating the tank. So you can do this a couple of ways. I have a bubble tool which I got with my Magic Castle tank which is just like a nice fancy pipette really and it's great for squeezing air into the tank. So you take the lid off, pop that down to the bottom and just squeeze it. Always make sure you take it out of the water before you squeeze it again so you're not just sucking up water. Another thing you can do is just stir the tank around. That will bring up the dust from the bottom but that's okay, it will settle again. You just give it a nice stir. You can also use the feeding spoon to give the tank a stir or something like a straw if you don't have a bubble tool or anything like that. I would avoid blowing into a straw because you're breathing out carbon dioxide and that can be quite toxic in the water at high levels so I would avoid blowing in like that. Rather use something just to push air in. You can use pipettes, syringes, turkey basters, anything like that you may have lying around the house. Just make sure it is clean and sterile before using it and hasn't got dish soap or anything like that on. But I would recommend using the spoon that came with them and just giving it a stir. I would do this a few times a day, every day when they're babies. You can do it a little bit less when they're adults, but I would recommend still doing it every day. I've got my other tanks on air pumps, but I'm doing this in a very basic way to show you what you can do without all of the equipment. So just do this. I tend to do it about 20 to 30 times a go and do that a couple of times a day. If you do notice they're swimming slowly and very lethargic, just aerate the tank more and that will try and help because that can be a sign of lack of oxygen. Changing coloration can also be a sign of that. So sea monkeys naturally vary in colour, but if they're suddenly turning a very dark red colour, that could be a sign that something else is going on, and I would recommend aerating your tank more. You can see on the front of the tank, we've got some really nice magnification windows, so that'll help you get a better closer look at your sea monkeys. So we're going to wait for the eggs to hatch, and I will see you shortly. So that was my sea monkey tank setup video. I hope you enjoyed the basic setup and learned something and some tips and tricks that will help you setting up your own tank. If you've got any questions, leave them down below and I'll be sure to answer them and they may also feature in an upcoming video on common sea monkey tank FAQs. So if you've got anything you want to know, anything at all, let me know down in the comments and I will get back to you. Thank you again for watching. If you haven't already, please hit that like and subscribe button. I will leave links here to subscribe and also there'll be some video links here as well. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to follow me on Instagram, the link is down in the description. Thank you again. Enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers.